Hello, everyone, and welcome to MindHub's live corporate update webinar. This is David Vidala from RBMG. MindHub is listed on Canada's TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol MHUB. Joining us today is MindHub's Executive Chairman, Vince Sirachi, and MindHub CEO, Arnaud Star Busman, who will be going through MindHub's September investor presentation. This will include an overview of current operations, recent achievements, and upcoming milestones. Please note, this presentation is being recorded today, Wednesday, September 8th, 2021, and will soon be made available on the company's website. At the end of the presentation, we will open it up for questions for management to address. If you are interested in asking a question and are logged into the Zoom app or web platform, you can submit your questions to us directly in the question module. Today's call may contain forward-looking statements that are subject to risks and uncertainties that may cause actual results, performance, or developments to differ materially from those contained in the statements and are not guarantees of future performance of the company. No assurance can be given that any of the events anticipated by the forward-looking statements will occur, will occur, or if they do occur, what benefits the company will obtain from them. Also, some risks and uncertainties may be out of control of the company. MindHub has a full disclaimer on page two of their presentation. Lastly, RBMG is not a registered investment advisor or broker dealer. For more information, please visit rbmilestone.com. And now I'll hand it off to Vince and Arnaud. Arnaud and Vince, the stage is yours. Very good. Um, thank you. Um, um, let me take the word. So I'm, I'm Arnaud Sarbusman. I'm the CEO at MindUp Technologies, a global and now public company that's building and operating an open enterprise grade platform for digital trade. So we bring efficiency, transparency, and responsibility to mining and metal supply chains. But before we go to the company, let me uh, let me first introduce myself. So I've got a master's degree in computer science uh, and then a background in consulting, enterprise transformation, new business setups and innovation in financial institutions, corporates, as well as startups. So I'm currently based in the Netherlands, but I've lived and worked across Asia, New uh, Australia, New Zealand and North America. But before mine up, I spent about 10 years with ING, which is the world's largest commodity bank. And that gave me co comprehensive exposure to the ways commodity supply chains are being operated, uh, as well as the many associated pain points. And in the last three years there at ING, I had the opportunity to start figuring out how we can solve those pain points and address them using blockchain technology. Together with other banks and large corporates, we set up some of the leading ventures uh, and leading platforms in that space. And, and one of those is mine up now. Today, I'll give you a high level introduction of the company and platform, the presentation, and the movie that gives a good summary of what I'll discuss today are available on our website. But before I move on, briefly, Vince, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today. I'm Vince Sirachi, um, Executive Chairman of MindHub Technologies. Uh, this is uh, an endeavor we started probably about three years ago and um, you know, just started trading on the TSXV here yesterday. Uh, and we're all very, very excited uh, for the future of this company. We're off to uh, we're off to a great start here, and um, I will let uh, Arnoud now describe uh, the opportunity moving forward. Sure, thanks, Vince. I guess before we get into the details, uh, it's worthwhile giving a bit of context for Mindup. So, it's yes, it's a platform for uh, digital trade, but it's really also designed to be enabling technology for several mega trends that have been out there for a while, but since the global pandemic started have accelerated significantly, particularly digitalization of trade is moving very fast now. Decarbonization is the top of the agenda and they're really pushing changes throughout the industry uh, because they're th really threatening the ability to compete, cost of capital, and even the license to operate in some markets. We are building a new digital infrastructure that will enable high value supply chains like mining and metals to cope with and even ride these mega trends. Our platform is based on years of validating pain points and solutions together with our current and future users and customers. Now, MindUp is blockchain based, it's secure, it's private, it's efficient, and allows users and companies to take control of their data and bring their operations into the 21st century. Now, our executive team is well prepared for that job. So in addition to Vince and myself here, uh, across the team, we cover the tech, the product, execution, and market capabilities that we need to succeed. 
And uh, I guess we are supported by a very uh, world-class board and advisors. And that's, uh, I just call out a few here. So David Garofalo, I think well-known as, uh, as a former CEO of Goldcorp, leading mining CEO in general. We've got Joe Nekla, Vancouver-based entrepreneur, specialist in platforms, and with several successful exits under his belt. And there's, for instance, Heike Truel. Um, she's quite hands-on working with us at the moment and, uh, and also a former executive at Anglo-American with uh, in including the digital agenda in our portfolio. But let me uh, let me talk about what we're doing and addressing um, and how we address uh, one of the pain points that we are that we're working on. So uh, best to do that with an illustration. And here's a, here's an example that I'll walk you through. So uh, moving a container from Africa to the Netherlands is an example that was uh, that was followed and. It involves many parties. Uh, there's lots of people involved, uh, lots of interactions between these people. And they're usually sending each other paper documents, emails with attachments, chat messages with information regarding the shipment. Or you find that they're often chasing each other to figure out what the status of the shipment is and where the, where the goods are. It's a very manual, labor-intensive process. Uh, there's a lot of reconciliations because of all the data points that are being shared. and. Uh, Consequently, uh, usually errors. Now that causes delays that affect customer service, customer satisfaction, but especially also consume working capital. Uh, in this example, 30% of the time was lost uh, the container just sitting there waiting for someone to process paper. And this is this is just one step of the journey, one shipment. Many of the supply chains we look at, they are very long, consist of many steps with different parties. And it's estimated that global trade loses about five to ten percent of the value of the traded goods due to the friction of paper and document-based processes. Uh, we take that, for instance, that statistic and we extrapolate that to the mining and metals industry, which is $1.8 trillion size per annum. That's $150, uh, $150 billion per annum pain point on our hands. And that's just one of the pain points we are addressing. I'll, I'll walk you through how we do that. Now, these the solutions we build, we don't make them up. We have, from the beginning, uh, been co-creating with a wide range of companies and organizations, including several that are the largest in their in industry and segment. So we started out originally with a syndicate, which acts as a sort of focus group that consists of Goldcorp, uh, Wheaton Precious, Capstone, Ocean Partners, and ING Bank. With these companies, they provided inputs, uh, designs, uh, to help us build the initial product, but also validation of what's good, what's not good. Right? And after that, the initial release that we, uh, in October 2019, we got more parties hands-on involved. We started road testing it, piloting, and some of these, these tests and validations have been very visible in the press, uh, including work that we did with giants like, uh, and are doing with giants like BHP, Vale, uh, but also uh, the, one of the largest Chinese state-owned enterprises, China Baowu. Many other companies that we're working with are not listed here, but they include small to medium enterprise, as well as some of the largest corporations in the industry. Working with all these companies has uh, allowed us to be uh, very disciplined in building for customer value, uh, not features. So we truly have been building the future for industry with industry. Diving a little bit into uh, mechanics. Um, so a key part of the solution is connecting all the parts of a trade ecosystem in an integrated workflow for collaboration. As we saw in that example I just showed, a shipment can involve up to 20, sometimes even 30 parties that need to collaborate with each other in order to deliver the physical commodities from one part of the world to another, transfer ownership, and uh, make sure that payment is received by the seller. Now, each transaction will have a different composition of part participants, being miners, traders, financiers, but also service providers like inspectors and um, uh, logistics providers like carriers and warehouses. Now, the way we design MindUp is that for each shipment, users can connect other companies as needed into that transaction when they need it, uh, give them access to the data that they are they need to see or provide, and virtually integrate operations teams across all these companies into a shared workflow. Um, in this essence, the platform is designed for secure multi-party collaboration on shared, but also distributed data in real time. And uh, I guess that also means that not all parties have to be connected on day one. In fact, we've seen that some parties start with none, others start with one customer that they um, 
that they connect with them to, etc. And gradually bring in the other customers, suppliers, as well as service and logistics providers into their network. Now, note that the uh, lo the logos that are here they're illustrative only for their for their group. They're not necessarily ex actual customers of Mylab at the moment. And the magic of Mylab starts with the simplicity of its solution. And if you look closely at what these parties do in a transaction, which I described at a high level, they're mainly copying, sending, processing, same information, sometimes updated, different formats, different versions, usually bilaterally between the parties across multiple channels like email, couriers, and, and chat messages. Now, if you then take that this occurs between 20 or 30 parties, we've got a explosion of information that is being uh, moved around the world and uh, spend, companies spend a lot of time reconciling all those parts of it to get to some, some understanding of what's really happening. Now, our solution and our platform at a base level, we replace all the communication and reconciliation complexity with just one integrated shared platform. We connect the parties that are involved in a transaction into a shared workflow. They coordinate all their work and their activities by collaborating on shared information. Everybody is always at the same page in real time. There's no surprises and the, the data is verified to be accurate. This is much more efficient, uh, but what's even bigger, it liberates information, high value information like contracts, inventory, logistics, uh, financing arrangement that's now stuck in inboxes, chat apps and courier bags, and makes it available for immediate use during the transaction for, uh, for high value activities. Now this platform is live and uh, has, has been running as, and is uh, what we are rolling out to our customers. And as mentioned, the core platform enables our customers to capture the information that they create and use in operations and interactions, uh, and then turn that information into high value data assets. Uh, now these are data assets then uh, contain information that can help companies uh, optimize working capital, uh, move to just-in-time delivery models, prove compliance with ESG regulations, etc. This and this core platform is therefore also a foundation for Mineup to help uh, to build applications, enterprise applications that help our users leverage these data assets. Now, and um, we can build and take these applications to market very quickly and for low capex because we have. Pretty much most of the foundation in place we've got the infrastructure the security we've got the data um, and we just need to roll out some business functionality now a couple of these applications are on the 2021 roadmap so it's a couple of months to go um, and we'll roll them out as well right so trade finance part of it is already in production and uh, being uh, being used now we've got constant trades application we're building an essay exchange feature that will be used uh, at the end of september early october in in production at the same time, we're also working on our ESG carbon tracking application, and I'll get into that one in a bit more detail shortly. Um, but that said, uh, even though we can do a lot, doesn't mean that we're going to do it all or do everything. And we don't, we're not going to boil the ocean. And in fact, our customers have already invested in information assets and applications that they uh, use and like. Uh, we, are, we don't intend to replace them. A fundamental part of our strategy is to uh, provide optionality and rapidly scale value for our users by partnering and integrating proven and established solutions. Now we've connected a few partners already uh, and now with the new financing we can accelerate that work. So there's an extensive lineup of fantastic partners on our on our roadmap for this year and next year. But I mentioned the ESG and let's drill down into that one a little bit because it's such a big theme and it's such an important and burning platform for action. Um, compliance is a big part of everybody's life and it's not going to go away. It's not going to get anything less. Um, and ESG compliance is becoming increasingly demanding on the companies operating these supply chains. It's increasingly so for producers in mining and metal supply chains who face enormous pressure from regulators, institutional investors, and the general public on a daily basis to disclose their ESG performance. Now, for example, let's take a car that a consumer wishes to buy. The automotive companies selling their car, they will be expected to have a sustainable brand promise. Otherwise, the customer is going to go elsewhere. And to that, to be able to do that, they need to be able to prove their ESG compliance in all the tiers in the supply chain, all the way back to the mines where the materials come from. In some jurisdictions, this is actually already law, like in the EU for batteries. Another problem is tracking and reporting on emissions. 
particularly scope-free emissions, voluntary reporting, this is a massive problem because there's so many data points that are needed uh, for that across their supply chains, upstream and downstream. And uh, at the same time, pressure is building from all sides with a direct correlation to cost of capital or even license to operate for those parties that can't do that. <coughs> now, MineUp can help our customers address both these challenges. It was built and designed to do so. MineUp can do it efficiently. We do it automated because we already we can carry the certified ESG information needed for the compliance as part of each transaction data set, but no extra work. Now, part of this ESG solution is already available and uh, in production, and the uh, but the full solution will be available in Q4. In terms of our business model, there's uh, we've got many options and directions where we can take this, but in the, in the essence. At a core level, we deliver it as a SaaS platform where companies can just register and off they go. Uh, some companies may want to take a blockchain node in-house and run it themselves for extra um, uh, comfort that, they, that the data is within their security parameter. Um, and they charge, But for both, we charge both subscription fees as well as usage-based fees, depending on the services that are being consumed. Our growth and retention model is, is, uh, is based on kickstarting it with a number of anchor customers in specific parts of the market, but then really it's based on viral adoption and network effects. We follow the existing commercial relationships between users. We help our users onboard their customers and suppliers and service providers. The foundation for our revenue model is really in the data that is created and used in the core platform by the operations team. And then as, as explained earlier with the same data we process, and are rich in applications like for trade finance and the ESG tracking app that we just mentioned. Now, pricing for these applications will be much more value-based. And then I mentioned our partners as well. Um, we will basically enter into revenue share arrangement with our partners. We believe that the combined solution of, uh, for instance, the LC platform and, and MineUp uh, equals a uh, is a one plus one equals three proposition to uh, to our customers, and there will be margin there that can be shared. It's basically we'll uh, operate like an app store model. Now, mining and metals is really our go-to-market focus, uh, but the core platform and enterprise applications address pain points that are also present in other supply chains, and we've started to dip our toes into other verticals, not just commodities though. My, mining companies are at the beginning. Uh, but also at the end of supply chains. They're also customers. And the challenges they face in their procurement operations are very similar to those of their customers' procurement teams. It's about visibility into supply chains, optimization, resilience, uh, ESG compliance, digitalization, etc. And I'm talking here about uh, buying and importing products for mining operations, construction projects like trucks, tires, spare parts, fuel, etc. The miner platform is very flexible, it's very scalable. And we can quickly expand into adjacent markets if and when we choose to, or when our customers ask us to. We're operating across the globe, We've got local teams in key locations. And um, uh, because our sales strategy really is based on helping our customers onboard their suppliers and customers, most of whom are in huge complex markets like China and Japan. Uh, to be successful with that approach, we need to follow our customer supply chains and be there in those complex markets. And, be 100% localized. So um, it worked for a bit over the last uh, year or so during the pandemic, but really it's not effective. If we want, if we engage in English with a giant state owned enterprise or with a uh, very traditional Japanese trading group, like we do from an office or even a garage in Europe, it's, it's just not an effective or sustainable approach. Um, so we've invested since last year in building teams in um, uh, in particularly those key markets. Uh, so we're on the ground, we speak the language, and uh, that also enables us to understand local problems, challenges, uh, and opportunities. Uh, it allows us to innovate and tailor our offering to bring the right solutions to those markets. Uh, we're there, we've got a fantastic team and a growing uh, customer base in, uh, in Asia. MyLab is an investment opportunity if we um, classify mark, uh, MineUp as blockchain market infrastructure, uh, particularly for supply chains. It's, it's really an emerging playing field. We're one of the few companies uh, that I'm aware of that are accessible to investors via by, by public markets. 
most are private, they are by corporates or VCs or uh, corporate consortia. Most are pre-revenue, most are trade finance focused. And whilst they're all valued at multiples of mine-up, there's none really that have the breadth and depth of what we're doing. So we provide solutions across the spectrum for end-to-end -end supply chain orchestration, trade finance, ESG reporting, and many others. And not just our own solutions, we also integrate our partner solutions into these workflows. We believe therefore that a $50 million uh, valuation is attractive uh, when compared to the other companies. And that we also believe that there's significant upside potential in this valuation. As a company, we were founded in 2018. Um, 2019 was really about building the initial release with, uh, with IBM and with our syndicate members. Uh, end of 2019, that was, uh, that was launched in 2020. We used that initial release to, uh, as a basis for further validation, refinement of the value propositions that are out there in the market and the prioritization around that. Uh, we did that with some of, uh, with quite a few customers, as, and as mentioned with BHP in China, but Baowu as the first uh, big one that we, uh, that we press released. 2021 uh, is really about commercial rollouts. It's the first half year road testing, ironing out some bugs, improving UX, et cetera, but we're really starting the commercial rollout now and focus heavily on adoption, building and road testing those new applications as well as integrating partner solutions. If I recap and summarize what I've just uh, spoken about, I believe and I know that we've got a fantastic validated product. We've got a world-class global team in place in the, uh, in the key locations and we've got high profile customers. I'm very happy with our cap table. It's diversified. We've got very loyal investors that have been there from the beginning. And we've got strong buy-in from management who are not going anywhere. In fact, they're very excited about this new phase in, um, in the company's life. Uh, and, and of course, our balance sheet is very solid. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Rod. If you are interested in asking a question or logged into the Zoom app web platform, you can submit your question uh, to me directly in the chat module. Um, we'll take a moment to develop a queue and thank you. And we'll be waiting just a moment. All right, well, since there are no questions today, um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank Arnaud and I'd like to thank Vince for joining today's webinar and thank everybody else for joining as well. Today's webinar recording will soon be made available on MindHub's website. If you have any additional questions that have not been addressed on this webinar, please feel free to email us at mindhub at rbmilestone.com. Again, that's mindhub at rbmilestone.com. Thank you. You are now free to disconnect. Thank you.